Hi and welcome back to another episode of PC Plays Guernsey FC with me Andy. As you can see on the screen, some of the um, the semi-finals have already been played. They were played on Tuesday, which doesn't make much sense. But then, yeah, the, as I said before, this is a really difficult um, playoff structure to try and get right in the editor. Um, so you can see Leek beat Runcorn and they played Crew. Uh, Tadcaster beat Frickley and they played in Wakefield. Coggershaw beat Evesham and they played at Burtley where we're actually going to be playing today as well. Um, Herm Bay beat Whiteleaf which is a really interesting result actually. Herm Bay have been very good uh, recently and they played in uh, Gillingham and AMC Sudbury beat Bowers and Pitsy and they played in Bishop Stortford. Uh, for some reason they've decided that FC Romania of I think Cricklewood somewhere in North uh, East London uh, should play Guernsey who are the first South team out of the whole of the football league um, sort of tier up to tier ten structure, uh, should play at Burtley, um, which are up in the northeast. Now the game is today, so we're on the Sunday, sixteenth of June. Sixteenth of June. I'm saying that we're going to pre-season in about two weeks. So yeah, we get to the final. That'll be fun. And I know that. Uh, Kev Lujo went through the same thing in his first season in his home save because he actually started in tier 8 um, in the, the league that Yaxley and Peter Sports and that playing um, so let's have a quick look at how Guernsey would actually get to a game like this where it is hi so you can see on the screen the, um, the nearest place we can fly into to go to Burtley, which is basically Chester the Street. It's um, Stockton on T. Yeah, so you've got Newton Aycliffe and, and Darlow and, and, and that all the way through, up through Durham to Chester the Street. So it's a long way. And unfortunately, the closest you can get to it flying in from Guernsey is Manchester Airport. Manchester Airport, 150 miles away by, by road um, over the M62 and up the A1M. That's two hours, 20 minutes drive. So I had a look at the flights. And now you can fly to Leeds Bradford, but you have to fly in on Saturday the 15th of June. And you wouldn't be able to fly out until Tuesday the 18th because that's the uh, first flight out. Um, obviously you could fly in Leeds Bradford and then out Manchester, but Manchester's got so many more flights. So I had a look at Manchester. <clears throat> if you flew in, 9.50 from Guernsey and got in at 11.20 on the Sunday morning, the kickoff's at three o'clock. Very, very tight to get there in time. So what's going to happen is you end up going to go in, go out on Saturday the fifteenth. And again, you've got nine fifty or five twenty. So we could take the five twenty flight. That's fine. Five twenty flight gets into Manchester at six forty five. You leave Manchester Airport seven thirty ish. So you could be up um, in and around. Uh, Chesterfield Street by ten o'clock on the Saturday evening with for a three o'clock Sunday kickoff, and that means we would be able to get back <coughs> either. Yeah, so what I would do is I would hotel near the ground on the Saturday night and hotel at Manchester Airport on the Sunday night, and uh, yeah, that is a real hassle. So basically the way these playoffs are set up means that yeah Guernsey might be going somewhere that is not Gatwick because they always fly in the Gatwick for games um, and they tend to have early kickoffs so other teams can get back if teams fly in the Gatwick as well so I thought I'd just share share that with you that um, yeah the logistics behind Guernsey going and playing a game like this where it is could be a real pain but yeah hey it's only a game isn't it yeah so back to the game at hand FC Romania versus Guernsey. Now, FC Romania finished second in the... Were they in the Bostic North? Bostic South Central. Okay, so they went in the Bostic North with your your teams like Bowers and Pitsy and um, Haybridge Swifts and whatnot. Uh, they were in the slightly more west um, part of the Isthmian League. Uh, and they look like they're relatively useful, but they've got nobody on any wages. How they came second, I don't know. But if you look at their last five games, forms are all relatively good. Um, goals, they've got one goal scorer, Kataru. Um, 
it looks like yeah the best of their players are on these non-contract deals so yeah interesting could be a, a very interesting game let's go to the team selection um, I think I am going to go with uh, Tamil on the wing back Harry played well last game but I think Tamil was a better uh, wing back um, yeah very quickly Dom Hume um, our 35 year old team leader has signed to become a director of football next year I thought that was really good to try and keep him in the team um, uh, not in the team but in the structure in the, so I say in the club itself so uh, yeah I'm really really pleased that I can keep him um, in the in the club um, but looking at who we, oh yes yes nearly forgot Robbie League <laughs> our striker who we haven't had all season because he was out with cruciates for 15 months is actually back and fit and if we look at his dribbling finishing first touch Tekkers off the ball naturally fit um, has decent pace and acceleration as well I think he could be a really useful striker at this level unfortunately he's got no fitness whatsoever at the moment so I'm going to possibly super sub him hopefully um, we won't have to go down that route um, but it, it's nice, he's a nice person to have there um, as I said not played one game for us so far so <laughs> it will be very interesting to see if anything comes of it I'm going to leave it as is as it was the last game because Tootin and Mitchell weren't a bad side and we did very well against them um, Jamie Dodd has signed another contract as well which is superb so the whole core of the team um, we have contracted for next year hoping that we can get stronger players in so they become more of a rotation or even backups but yeah um, really pleased that we're keeping the core a core of a team that's got us to the playoffs when we were expected to be 12 or 13 so yeah I'm, I'm pretty 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 pleased with that so yeah this is the team we'll go with Callum in goal Tamil uh, left wing back playing sort of a full back area but yeah just marauding Jamie Dodd and Steve Aldridge in the middle um, with Liam Marne at right back I think Charlie Fripp's not going to be too far off from coming back let's have a quick look where's the Fripper yeah so he is actually back fit um, I am actually very tempted to get him back in so he's literally only just come back in fit so um, so where does Jamie fit in the ability rankings so Charlie Fripp there versus Liam there it's got to be Charlie really isn't it oh, let's just go back to tactics where's Charlie Charlie Fripp to come in for yeah so he's got the Liam's done a, a good job for us um, but yeah it's, it's good that we can get Charlie back in he's 93 63 I can't can't do it he's just not fit enough he's going to end up hurting himself did I put Harry in what am I doing put Liam back in um yeah, 93 and 63 percent um, sort of preparedness is not going to cut it. Not in a game like this. Not if it could go to extras as well. Uh, we'd have nobody to sort of cover his position. So no, I, I think Charlie is one game away from coming back. He might be back for the final. Let's just see if we can get there. Oh God, it'd be lovely if we can get to one of those five finals. It'd be amazing. Um, and we already know who we're going to play as well. But I'm not going to spoil that. Um, so I think we're going to leave as is so Tamil, Jamie, Steve, Liam Charlton with um, Arthur Warren and Charlie Higgins I think I'm going to spot Charlie Higgins played very well as an attacking centre mid last game and scored uh, yeah with, with Frank and uh, Joe Charles up front with Kieran on the right possibly Nathan to come in on the left we've got Robbie Le Leggett can come in um, most probably for Frank Rosenwald because he hasn't been playing particularly well recently bless him uh, and Tom De Delamere to take a, a centre mid place do I do I not try, do I have a second midfield position in and not worry about Nathan for this game or do I play Nathan from the start I think I've got to give Nathan a go he is very good at that that position for his age which is, is he's still only was he only 15 yeah he's only 15 he's still very good um yeah, I think I'm going to have to give Nathan the game. 
put Chalk back in to support, have Charlie as our attack on the right with Liam as a, yeah, I've got to play him as wing back, otherwise we just don't get anything up this right hand side. Um, uh, with, yeah, Vincent in goal, Tom De La Mer, Frank, Robbie and Kieran, who I think I'm going to leave, Nathan's good natural fitness, he'll be able to see the game out. I think I'm going to have to bring in yeah, I'm going to have to bring in Ed Dryden, I think, for, for Kieran. So we've got two uh, two midfielders there for these three positions because they're the ones that are doing all the work and getting knackered. So, yeah, we're going to leave that as is. Yeah, I've not been focusing on this because I've been playing through middle and we've been doing nothing. So if I leave it open to let the play dictate what happens, it seems to work better. Okay, so that's what we're going to go with. Yeah, Jamie Dodd did have a relatively good game last time out, so I'm willing to keep with him over Frank at the moment. Oh, and they're playing a weirdy, weirdy one. Two, two defensive midfield and just one up top. Ooh, I don't think we played against this one. Or if we have, it might have played against it once. They've got quite a few regens as well. This could be very interesting. Maybe why and how they've done so well. Um, assertively... There's nothing that I want to really say at the moment. Assertively, go out there and impress me. Never does anything. Passionate, faith. That always does well. And team talk. Oh, we've got a, God, we've got a, a, a tunnel interview. Uh, Rasvan Akostokolea. I don't know who he is. <laughs> I'm fair to single him out. Um, rested. Have we picked the right team? Um, I certainly hope so. Done very well. Yeah. Uh, Frank Rosenwald takes, does he? Okay. I've obviously not paid enough attention to that, but he is a natural leader, so. Um, yeah, natural choice. Oh my god, we're on a pitch that's about. 150 yards long interesting all right here we go then semi-final um not at all feeling nervous oh. and nothing's happening so far so i mean literally nothing is happening all our guys are still on 6.7s <laughs> two shots we seem they've got a bit more of the possession, but um, what I might do, I'm going to pause it now. I'm going to go to uh, opposition tactics actually, because I completely forgot about that. I'm going to press, but I'm going to also press these guys and get them on their weaker foot. Now I'm going to go to our tactics. He's on support. I'm going to get him going back. Again. On pressing those the, the defensive midfielders, just getting in amongst them and becoming a real pain, um, which we know Joe can do very well with his forty goals this season. Oh, sorry, let's play that, shall we? Yeah, interesting team. Well, the, the background I see Romania are really interesting as well because, as they say, they're, they're yeah, mainly Romanian players. Oh, just over from uh, Charlie. Um, and they've actually yeah, done well to progress up the, the league structure to where they are at the moment. And they've got a, a very useful side. Oh, they've got a free kick. Oh, that's over. What's that? The goals are blue and yellow, so you can barely see them. Interesting. From, oh, it's also very, very... Yeah, just very level as a game at the moment. So Charlton over the top? No, nothing doing. Guinea to breach. Oh man, over the top! Oh, <laughs> come on, boys, for God's sake! I've oh, such a long pitch, though. If I'm playing, if I don't play high up, it's just going to be such a stretched game. It's unbelievable. That was Jamie Dodd again, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah, Jamie Dodder's cover got done. I'm gonna swap them around. Actually, no, Jamie Dodd's left footer. 
or he, he prefers left footed I'm going to have him as the stopper and have Steve as the cover behind yeah I mean that's such a such a long pitch and that was a standard line as well if I go higher up and they go tune up that is definitely my fault I just want to try and push it up a little bit yeah let's confirm the change and play that yeah we seem to have yeah Charlton's doing one on 6.8 we seem to have sunk back a bit not that they're playing amazingly but and yeah, there's half time okay I'm going to uh, give them a rollicking and we'll see you for the second half alright as you can see I've just swapped a few little bits around I've put Charlton had a really good half actually um, over to the attack side because he he was shown to be getting into the right places um, I'm going to put Tamil as a wing back as well on support to see if I can get him up a little bit does Nathan not play inside forward at all not too clearly what about if I put him over here? He's not going to like that at all, is he? He's left, he's left footed, isn't he? Yeah, left only. I thought it would have been a good inside forward cutting in on that side, but obviously not. So I'm going to leave him in his preferred place. Um, but yeah, if we get to 60 minutes and nothing doing, I might take Joe off because I don't want him to get himself sent off. We're well, only sending off about all season was him on two yellows, so yeah yeah that's how we're going to play fingers crossed because I don't want to particularly go out in a semi-final of a, a playoffs knowing that you really have to win the league to not go through this nightmare um, I mean we're positive at the moment oh, I've turned it to standard because it's so stretched and we're trying to play short and it's just not not working Liam good ball over Nathan he's had got room there Oh no, no way. Tamil, get it across, get it across. Got loads of room, switch it, switch it to the right. Half at a Charlton and out right, that's it. Now Liam, get it in. Nathan, Nathan! What the hell happened there? It looked like the goalkeeper teleported. Okay, that wasn't too bad actually, that was, that was a show right we're coming to 60 right Robbie Leg you're going to come on and you're going to do a job now he's right footed is he not yet I'm going to get him on the right as his designate a poacher a designated position as a poacher I definitely want him to feel comfortable in how he's playing Um, he's having a mare did I just Oh, yeah let me go back I just took the wrong person off I'm actually gonna take yeah I'm gonna have an attacking forward and a poacher together which I haven't done all season um, or do I yeah I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Frank who does like playing as this sort of defensive pressing forward see if he can yeah, yeah. I think I'll go with that one. I think I'll go with that. So come on, Robbie. First game of the season, mate. You're gonna to have to do something. No pressure at all, obviously. Nothing doing. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shout at them to demand more. Sixty-eight done. Who's not doing anything in midfield? Frank, oh, Arthur's looking motivated. Charlton's looking composed. They're all looking sort of composed. The midfield's not had a bad game. This is a really tough one because I'm sort of I've got defensive midfielders, but I haven't got sort of attacking midfielders to come in, and it's looking quite stretched. And what I might have to do, I'll go much higher. And just trust that goalkeeper can do something and the ball just goes over the top. What I might do as well is go extremely high tempo. Real Gagan press. <sighs> not last throw not last throw of the dice quite yet, but I'm hoping if I'm doing that we're gonna really press on them. Yeah, 
this is dying a death this game isn't it are we going to get any highlights at all they've just made a triple <laughs> they've just made a triple sub okay you've made the triple I'm going to do the same I'm going to get fresh legs on Dryden and Tom Delamere on for Charlie and Arthur last chance saloon boys I'm going to go attacking God, fingers crossed boys we've got to do something here okay so they've got the highlight Dryden's out of Bavane oh great save by Callum now use it out wide come on get it out get it out to the left no he just banged it but Robbie legs on it no not there Liam rubbish Charlton get there Liam good Tom Delamere to Steve to Charlton highlight continues oh Robbie <laughs> and the goal yes absolutely brilliant poor defending though but we're back in it Charlton just a lumped ball basically Robbie is there Bavane oh dear and yeah Robbie leg <laughs> oh one all right <clears throat> think about it let's bring this back to positive let's go to tactics let's bring these hot lines back a little bit I'm going to keep them higher I'm going to take extremely high tempo back off to higher and short passing they like to short pass um, but the goal came from a lump, didn't it? Let's stay with standard. Confirm the changes and play. Ooh. This is going extra. Oh, we've got got corner. Oh, let's head over. Robert, Robbie's there. Get it in the middle. Back post. Goal! Yes! Come on! Frankie boy. What a comeback. <laughs> oh, wow. Chuffed is not the word. Nathan, not a brilliant cross, but Chris Descu out the back post. Robbie Leg back in the middle. Amazing crossover to Frank just to nod in the bottom right. 2 1. Wow. Um, I'm just going to leave it. I'm, don't dare touch it. Oh, okay. They've got the ball. Barton. Oh, it's a cross. It's pinballing, but it's out. And we're through. We're through at the final. Wow. <laughs> what a comeback. 84-99. Robbie Leg hasn't played for 15 months. Comes in and gets a goal off a, a poor piece of defending. And Frankie Rosenwald off of a great cross from Robbie as well. Wow. Um, <sighs> amazing, boys. You've done brilliantly come back and win. I am proud of you. I'm proud, proper proud. End the team talk, continue. Right, so this this season is going to go one more episode. Um, what I can tell you is I know we will be playing the winners of Fatcham and Radcliffe who haven't played yet. Fatcham, who were third in the Evo Stick South Div 1, yeah, obviously, but third. And Radcliffe, who were third in the Northern Premier. So that's not so bad Osset I think were yeah they were third in the east side so that was a west of Radcliffe because they're a Manchester team aren't they right after all my earlier waffle here you can see on the screen we are actually playing Radcliffe and we're going to pick the same place again the Robinson Heaton and Plumbing Stadium for at Burtley up in Chester the Street so that isn't going to be until Sunday the 29th and some reason I can't see it on my schedule but I can see it on my calendar I could I can't see it now but yeah I've, I've seen it on my calendar so I, I know we're playing on the 29th but some of these games are playing on the Tuesday the 24th though so it's all a bit yeah, crazy but yeah join me next time for a playoff final against Radcliffe if we can pull one out of the bag and get through then tier 7 here we come and that will be amazing for a first season so if you like what you've seen, please um, yeah, leave a thumbs up on the video. And subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't already, why not? Come on, sort it out. Subscribe. 
and you'll get this Monday, Wednesday, or Friday every week. Um, I might, after a few seasons, go to Monday, Friday, but we'll, we'll see how it go, goes for now. God, we're going to be, what, 16, 17 episodes into a single season here. So I'm hoping that that's all, that will calm down a bit and we'll look at sort of between sort of 12 to 14 episodes per season. Because I know we're going to be doing about 20 seasons of this to try and get them up towards sort of Champions League status and, and winning stuff at that level. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And, yeah, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>